Hi, Tabas. Hey there. Uh, I'm, I haven't had a chance to read the Martin Luther King book. Yes. I'm a huge fan, though. I think he was an amazing oh, yes. individual. Yeah. What did you learn from studying his life that has applied to yours? Ooh. Let me just tell you what the book is about in, in 60 seconds, or maybe a minute and a half. And I think we'll answer your question. So this, this book, Death of a King, the one that JJ and I are working on now as a, as a project, is the story that we don't know about Martin, the last year of his life, very quickly. April 4, 67, Martin goes to New York City, the Riverside Church, to give his most controversial speech of his life beyond Vietnam. He comes out against the war in Vietnam, calls America in that speech the greatest purveyor of violence in the world today. That's a bold statement for a Negro to make, even if you do have a Nobel Peace Prize. He says to America, you, America, are the greatest purveyor of violence in the world today. Then he says, if you don't get serious about the triple threat facing this country, we're going to lose our democracy. That triple threat, racism, poverty, and militarism. For giving that speech, for telling the truth that he knew, against the war in Vietnam, the next day, everybody turned against Dr. King. And watch this now. The speech is April 4, 67. One year to the day later, almost to the very hour, they assassinated Dr. King one year to the day later. So the book covers April 4, 67, that speech, to the end of his life, one year to the day later. And here's what happens to Martin. Here's the price he pays for being so courageous to tell the truth even though it was too subversive for the rest of America to handle. The White House disinvites him. He and LBJ have worked together to pass the Voting Rights and Civil Rights Act, but now LBJ wants nothing to do with Martin, disinvites him to the White House. He is unwelcome in black churches. He cannot speak, he cannot preach anymore in black churches. Disinvited to the White House, disinvited to black churches. The mainstream media turned against him. I don't mean Fox News, they run around then. Because can you imagine what Fox News would have done with that Negro after he called America the greatest purveyor of violence in the world? But the LA Times, the New York Times, the Washington Post, Time Magazine, the so-called liberal media turned on him. And then the black media turned on him. The last poll taken in his life, the Harris Poll, found that 75%, three quarters of the American people, thought he was irrelevant. 60% of his own people thought he was persona non grata. The NAACP turned on him. The Urban League turned on him. Everybody turned against Martin. And then they won't let him publish his book. He's written a few books prior to this. They won't give him a book deal. He can't get a paid speech. He ends up dying bankrupt. And his friend Harry Belafonte had to pay for his funeral. Martin, my point is simply this, Martin had no idea all these years later that we'd have schools and libraries and streets and monuments and holidays named after him, but that Negro stayed true to himself. He never stopped telling the truth, even though they couldn't handle it or couldn't see it in that moment. And that's what I mean when I say we celebrate people who make us better people, who help us live our own uh, I live lives of authenticity ourselves. So the lesson I learned from him is be true to the courage of your convictions, even if folk don't get it right now. The truth, as my grandmother says, a lesson in this book, the truth don't move. My grandma, the, the truth just don't move. So you just tell the truth, and eventually people will catch up with it. That's what I learned from Dr. King.